we'll go side two. Today we're reading the biggest apple ever. But, oh, wait, in the camera, there's the biggest apple ever because this, the letters are backwards. It's okay. Let's read it now. The biggest apple ever. Once there was two mice who fell in love with the same apple pie, but you had to be there to see how it happened. On opening day in Mouseville School, the principal, Mr. Smosser, made an announcement. We will be learning about apples this fall, and to get things started, we will have a contest. Whoever brings the biggest apple to his teacher will win a special prize. The judging will take place on Friday. Good luck to everyone. I have an apple tree in my backyard, said Penelope. I bet it has really big apples. There's an apple tree across from my house, said James. I'm going to climb it as soon as I get home. I don't have any apple trees, said Clayton. The house smells, but I am going to find Mr. Smothley the biggest apple ever. No, you're not, said his friend Desmond, the field mouse. I am. Oh, yeah, said Clayton. Yeah, said Desmond. All the way home on the school bus, Clayton and Desmond talked about the contest. Maybe I can grow an apple tree with really big apples, said Clayton. It takes too long, said Desmond. I hear Mr. Smosley say, six years. I'll think of something, said Clayton. So will I, said Desmond. When Clayton got off the bus, he sneaked back to town to see what Penelope and James were up to. Penelope had come down from her tree. She was carrying two tiny apples. James was still up in the tree across the street. He was picking very small apples. Clayton knew he'd seen bigger ones at the market. When Desmond came by a little later, he realized the same thing. The next day at school, Penelope and James brought in their tiny apples. No one else had brought in anything. Mrs. Mousley cleared her throat. Class, we have a lot of work to start the year. Because, oh, but because we are learning about apples and having an apple contest. We will go to Barnby's Orchard this afternoon. Everyone got very excited. I'm going to find a winning apple, said Clayton. I'm going to find a winning apple, said Desmond. At the orchard, Mrs. Mousley pointed out the different kinds of apples. Then everyone disappeared into the trees looking for a winner. Clayton walked down one row carrying his neck. Desmond walked down another row carrying his neck. Then Clayton saw what he thought was a really big apple. It was a little too high to reach, but he stretched for it. At that moment, Desmond saw the very same apple on the very same branch. He stretched for it, too. They bumped heads and fell down. I think we should bring this apple in together, said Clayton. No one said we could, said Desmond. But when they got back to the bus, James had an apple that was even bigger. The apple was so big, he could hardly carry it. Clayton and Desmond looked at each other. What would they do now? That night at dinner, Clayton explained the problem to his dad. Hmm, said dad, apples don't come into many signs. Do you think you'll find a bigger one? I don't know, said Clayton. Then maybe James will win the prize this time. It's okay if he does. Over at Desmond's house, Uncle Vernon said exactly the same thing. But Clayton and Desmond were still demise. The next afternoon, they met at Barmy's Orchard. They picked two huge baskets of apples, but nothing they found was bigger than the apple James had picked. You know, Clayton said, I think that was right. This time James gets to win, but we've got all these apples. Why don't we bake a big apple pie? Desmond laughed. Great, let's bake the biggest apple pie ever and we'll make it for our class. Clayton nodded, and I think I know where we'll find a pie pan that's big enough. Falling afternoon, Desmond arrived at Clayton's house with Uncle Vern. Everything's packed up and ready, Clayton said. It's all in Dad's truck. But where are we going, Desmond asked. You'll find out in a minute, said Clayton. Dad drove with Clayton and Desmond beside him in the front seat. 
Uncle Vern stayed in the back with the apples and onion and greens for the giant pie. As they came around the corner, this one gasped, Tony's Pizza! Of course, Sick Playton, what could be better than a giant pizza pan? Mr. Tony greeted them at the door. Welcome, welcome, we are ready to begin. And so they got to work, making the dough for the crust, netting it, rolling out half into a big circle and spreading it over the deep dish pan. Then everyone peeled and sliced the apples to, and mixed together the sugar and spices and spread the rest of the dough on top. Well, said Clayton and Desmond, when they were finished, Wow, 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 an hour, said Mr. Tony, give me an hour. The giant pan just spit into his huge oven. The next day was Friday. Who had the largest apple? James, of course, and Mrs. Mouse handed him the prize. A cheddar cheese apple, Mrs. Mouse, you looked surprised. Clayton, there's one, nothing from you. The two of them grinned at the same moment. The classroom door flew open, and came Clayton's dad, Uncle Vern, and Mr. Tony, struggling to carry the giant pie themselves. How wonderful, said Mr. Smousley, the biggest apple pie ever. We made it for the whole class at Clayton. All of us together, said Desmond. They shared a high five, and everyone in the class had a very big slice.